In the previous part, I managed to get the back wheel spinning, but just barely. The drive sprocket was misaligned, which caused the chain to tighten and slacken over every wheel revolution. I spent an afternoon and well into the night tack welding and re tack welding the mount until I finally got it aligned within a millimeter on each axis. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, I don't know what that is. Huh. On the first test, it turned out that the motor sprocket was flipped around, which didn't take too long to fix. Let's turn the key and see. Nice. Nice. On the second test, I was able to go max speed with no audible issues. Man, that, that moves it. There we go. <laughs> Those bearings are gonna wear out in no time. The charger's plug was the same kind that you can find on a PC. It's a female IEC 320. I crimped some disconnects to the male port after ensuring the correct polarity. I'm pretty sure I broke something the first time I tried charging the battery. Looking at the footage, I can't tell if it's a glare on the camera or if there's actual smoke spilling out of the charger case. Send help. My order of Kapton tape finally came in, so I took some time to insulate the battery. I did about three layers and left the BMS exposed for easy access. For whatever reason, I then decided to go on to making the electrical housing as I described in the last video. To begin, I marked and cut some flat metal bar which will be used for the hypotenuse of the housing. Okay, so using the excess metal from the corner brackets on the chassis, it gives us more clearance to fit a battery or any other electronic. Um, if I have it stand up, our little supports like this. So I think I'm gonna find a way to uh, tack these down. Next, I wanted to separate the front handlebars from the rest of the bike. To begin, I disassembled the brakes. Then, I used a cutting wheel on my angle grinder to cut through the bike's chassis. So I used a Dremel to cut off the final pieces on the stem before smoothing them out with a grinding wheel. My chassis would be welded to the handlebar stem via one and a half inch square tubing. I marked the box tube to fit the chassis and then cut it. So great news guys, the metal bracket fits pretty dang nicely. After a bit of testing, I went ahead and completed the weld so that it could hold my weight. I really wanted to try the scooter out, so I aired up the tires and went at it. The next day, I decided just to zip tie up the electronics to give the scooter a go. Okay. Give us a countdown, Kale. Oh, shit. Oh, 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 that man go. Good hit. Good hit. Good hit. Yes. Heck yeah. Oh, 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 o
Unfortunately, the scooter only worked for a couple of minutes, and every time I'd go on the throttle, the power would instantly cut out. Unfortunately, that's all the footage I got because of the power issue. In the next video, I'll be diagnosing the issue, and I'll have some awesome riding clips.